Interesting thing about growing up in Australia was back in the 70s and late 60s was there was no radio format to speak of, so we got to listen to everything. So we, our influences when I grew up were Motown, Stevie Wonder, ACDC, Led Zeppelin, Deep Purple, Free, Queen, um, other Australian bands like the Saints. I mean, it just basically the radio stations played everything, including uh, you know, crap pop from the days or um, in, or interesting pop like Dusty Springfield. So we got to grow up listening to all styles of music. My favourite In Excess albums at the moment would be a draw between uh, Welcome to Wherever You Are and Switch. Welcome was one of the the most band orientated. Everyone had equal input. It was a fantastic recording experience. Um, we all had a great, great fun and really proud of that record. And Switch in a different way has the same feeling. It's a very collaborative effort. We're very proud of how it turned out and especially how quickly we got it together. I guess the most rewarding feeling would be just the fan response. I mean, the, the, the shows have been getting um, you know, crazier and, and bigger and um, that's been, a, you know, they could have the fans could have stayed home, but you know, the good news is that they um, they love what we do, they love the record, and we're playing playing our asses off. Like we're firing on all eight cylinders, so we're just uh, having a great time. So at the moment, it would be probably Devil's Party because it's uh, it's a song. It's a funny song. People haven't been really talking about it as a single, but we just love playing it. The crowd digs it. And now it's slowly started creeping into the back of people's heads that it could be a, a great single. So we're thinking about doing a video for that. But also Perfect Strangers, Hot Girls. Any, you know, we, well, I'd love to do a video for all the whole album. It'd be great. Personally, now that we're back on doing arenas again, um, I love the big stages. I love playing to a big wide stage to lots of people where there's people on the sides and people way up in the... In the in the, you know, up in the nosebleed seats. But you know, having said that, I also do love playing a small club venue where it's just loud and powerful and wild and crazy and sweaty. But we try and make it, you know, the larger venues feel that way anyway, so I, I have to say I prefer the larger venue. Least favourite sound right now is in Chicago at this hotel, A Sirens. I don't know what it is about, about Chicago, but every, there's a siren out going past the hotel every five minutes. Um, so at the moment, it's sirens. My favourite sound would be laughter. After all we've been through, I guess the most touching thing is the fans um, wanting us to keep going. I mean, we always wanted to keep going. We're a family, and families keep going. But um, yeah, there's been some fans that, that, that have sort of wondered why we kept wanting to go after, keep going after Michael, but you know, it's been an overwhelming response from fans to keep, keep in excess going. So that's incredibly touching. That is really touching because it shows that they love what we do and they probably, you know, in many ways love us as people and love us as, as the family that we are. It is a, a, a strong theme in, in, in every conversation we have with fans, past and present and yeah because there's a lot of new fans and they're they're pretty um you know, they've you know just maybe have, have known about excess but really got to know you know to discover and love in excess through the television show and with jd so now they're they're backtracking to the old records and the, and and checking out our history and they really get it now like even before they just thought it was just a tv show that you know it's ironic. It, so to, to some of the new fans, we look like TV stars with a hit record, as opposed to the obvious thing as a successful band with a hit TV show. So um, it's it's great to see the fans coming together and our older fans really loving, you know, accepting JD and loving the new record, and our new fans loving the band as well, you know, as well as as um, loving JD. Probably a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll by ACDC. That's that's such a hard question because if you can, you know, if one song can describe your life, you've got a pretty sad life. But I guess you know, as professionally, I guess a long way to the top would be the main one. Yeah, 
Um, there's a couple. There's a lead station. Did a remix of What You Need in that in the in the eighties, but also anything Fat Boy Slim did, um, anything Norman Cook did, because um, he did a few for us. And he's, he's just magic, that guy. He uses magic. And there's one, unfortunately, he did for one of our songs we couldn't release because he he used something from another band that he didn't get clearance for. So. But it, boy, that was a good remix. But uh, that'll sit in our vaults forever, I'm afraid. I think I think it was elegantly wasted. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, it's it's just yeah a simple thing. It was right at the beginning of copyright infringements, and he he thought he had clearance for a certain piece of another band song, and he didn't. And uh, that's the way it goes. <laughs> As a band, I guess it's hard to collaborate as a band, but because we've, we've we've done the ultimate collaboration, we've got a new singer. I mean, that's we've collaborated with you know with the other side of the world, with TV and and Mark Burnett people to to get what we wanted, which is a new singer and a new record and get out and tour. But I mean, me personally, I've been writing with people in Los Angeles um, all through you know, last year up to the TV show and during the TV show. And one guy I really enjoy working with was Scott Wilde from Velvet Revolver. So I'd like to. Kind of revisit that relationship too. What, would you, what did you work on with them? Uh, just a song that we have, yeah, um, piece. I've got whole piles of songs and music, and he just. We actually did it. We sat down and went over the music, and then and we had just as I sat down, went to his studio, and uh, I think it was in Burbank. Um, there was a blackout. Some guy cut a wire that blacked out two thirds of, of Los Angeles. I don't know how he did it. Um, just as we sat down, there was a major blackout, and we couldn't do any work. So we sat there and just listened off of Macintoshes and worked out where we were going and he just jotted some ideas down and then went off when the power came back on and I had to get back to the back to work um, he just emailed me the song and it was a great collaboration considering we didn't really sit down with guitars it was just done just trading ideas he's, he's a wonderful guy actually I, I, I was um, I'd never met him but I'm a big fan I mean I love Stone Temple Pilots and um, that was that was fun working I'm not really a shopper, to be honest. I mean, we've got we've got stylists that go out and get us stuff, and I'm just basically jeans and yeah, I'm a bit of a slob some ways. So I'll just wear t-shirts and, and jeans. I got dressed up for this, but um, uh, there's a there's a, a place in Australia called Politics. They've you know kind of like this 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 where the shirt came from. I can't every time I go in there, I find something I like, which is pretty rare for me. I'm not really a shopper. Um, and other than that, I I sort of like going to Urban Outfitters to pick up t-shirts, but. Usually I walk out buying Jesus action figures or other crap that they sell. <laughs>